in one another. The beauty he looks at is what we are on the inside. Whether we let him come in and clean and purify us and beautify us, whether we allow him to in, come in and get all the filth and the junk and the bad attitudes and the way we think and the way we act, get all that stuff out and transform us so that we are literally different on the inside. Jesus leaves to make us desperate. For the Christian, you know what this comes down to be? This comes down to be the sin of prayerlessness. That people don't understand who's knocking at the door. Do you understand who's knocking at your door? This isn't a man, not a mere mortal. It's not just some deity among other deities. This is the God that breathes stars out of his mouth. That creation is so big we can't even find the end of it. It's massive. And then he says, it's only this to me. It's the breath of my hand. It's as nothing. And he is the one that's come down and knocking on your door and says, open up. Open up, my darling, my dove, my flawless one. Let me in. Let me clean those idols out of your life. Let me clean the, the filth out of you that separates me from your love, from you, from knowing you. Prayerlessness. You know, the church today does not understand the tremendous sin of prayerlessness because it's an absolute affront against the God who calls us. An affront is saying, Jesus, you are not important enough to me to lay aside this time. And what's going to happen with some of you, and I'm not trying to be prophetic in this, I'm just speaking the reality of life. Some of you are going to go back out there when you're done, you graduate, you'll have a wonderful testimony, you'll give up here on the day you graduate, and, and you'll go out there and think you're going to do great, and you'll go back into a job, whatever it is, and slowly your prayer life is going to disappear, and you will be back where you were. Because you will not be protecting the relationship. You'll let the sin of prayerlessness come into your life, and it will destroy you. Because the only hope you have of being beautiful by God's standard of beauty is that you are near to the one who is beautiful. That you cling to him, that you hold to him, that he becomes your all in all. That he becomes the very means by which you can sustain and walk with him. And if you sever that, you sever your lifeline. You sever everything. Prayerlessness will destroy you. It can't be a legal obligation, something I got to do it or I'm going to die type of thing. But you have to remember who it is that's knocking at your door, who it is that's inviting you, this God that needs nobody, this God that does not need you, this God that is calling you, wooing you, compelling you to come, to open wide the door, let him clean out the filth of all the idols and all the junk that's been inside of you that you protected, that you're still trying to protect in here. Let him in. Because you see, the sin of prayerlessness is the sin of neglecting Jesus. So what it really comes down to be is just, you are not important enough, God. You are not important enough. And so other things are important. It's more important for me to mow the lawn, more important for me to do this or do that thing. You're not important enough. And it's also the sin of saying no. That there he is knocking at the door. Child, come away, sit with me. What an astounding idea. Spend some time with me. Did he go to you and say, spend some time with me? And then you say, no. No. Do you see how evil that no is? How evil that no is? Because it's not just a person that's asking you. It's almighty God. And we say no to him. Well, imagine this young man is getting married. It's his wedding day, and the church is packed full. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden, the groomsman comes out, the best man comes out, and he stands up there. 